Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Sami here. Today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto stops the Chiha massacre, part 1. Hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Night had long passed over Kanahagakur, the village hidden in the leaves. With the moon shining in the night sky, many of the residents had gone to sleep. Only a few of its residents were awake at this hour. One of these few residents was the Sandame Hokage, Sirotobi Hirzen. The aged shinobi sat at his desk doing paperwork. Hirzen was trying to find ways to keep himself awake by doing one of the more mundane aspects of being Hokage. He was, however, more focused on the door to his office. The man was currently waiting for a specific shinobi to arrive, so that he could have a discussion with him. After the Sandame finished a whole stack of paperwork, he heard a knock on the door. Enter. Hirzen spoke up, as he moved his paperwork to the side of his desk. The Sandame Hokage watched, as the door to his office opened. The young man dressed in the Kanoha Anbu uniform walked into the room. He wore a mask that identified him as the Anbu operative weasel. The young man walked to the center of the room before bowing to the Hokage. You can take off your mask, Itachi, and have a seat. I have many things we need to discuss. Hirazan said. Understood. The Anbu nodded. The young man removed his mask, revealing onyx eyes, and jet black hair. The Anbu operative, Itachi, proceeded to sit down in a chair in front of Hirazan's desk. How are you, Itachi? Do you have anything to report about yourself? Hirazan questioned. Itachi nodded. Yes, Hokage-sama. I just left the compound after spying on a personal meeting between my father and a few of the main conspirators in my clan. I have reason to believe that the coup they have been planning will occur in a month's time. Here's inside. Itachi's clan, the Chiha clan, had been planning a coup dedicated against Kanoha. The clan, ever since the Kitbi attack, had been treated negatively by a good portion of the Kanoha shinobi. They were under suspicion as possible instigators of the fox's attack. Due to this discrimination and suspicion, the Chiha clan had started to resent Kanoha and its ideals, and were planning to act appropriately. The end result of the Chiha clan's actions, as the Hokage and Itachi saw it, would be a civil war that would destroy Kanoha. Is there any more information you have heard? Hiruzen asked, as he massaged his temples. Itachi shook his head. The clan is being secretive about who they let no information, even amongst the conspirators. The Anbu operative paused in his speech for a few seconds before speaking again. I believe they are starting to suspect that I am leaking information about the coup. The Sandame sighed in response again. With each subsequent meeting with Itachi, the information he gave became graver and more upsetting to the aged Hokage. Action was going to be needed soon. Thankfully, Hirazan had an idea for an action. Itachi, ever since you informed me about your clan's plan, I have been trying to come up with a solution. Tonight, I believe I finally have one. He claimed. Itachi nodded. The Chiha had an idea on the Hokage's solution. Earlier that day, he had discussed the coup with Shimura Danzm. Danzm had informed him about the need to remove all threats to Kanoha, and had encouraged him to eliminate the members of his clan. Itachi, as much as the idea pained him, couldn't fold the logic behind it. The hate of his clan was at an all-time high. Something had to be done to avert the upcoming war, and removing the instigators of this war would be the most ideal way to keep Kanoha safe. Itachi, having this idea in his head, listened to his Hokage, expecting to be ordered to massacre his own clan. I am sick of violence. We just fought the third shinobi world war, and I do not want to see any more shinobi die. Peace is needed in this village. Hiruzen declared. Therefore, I have decided that the village needs to strengthen the bond with your clan. I know many of the Ichiha feel underrepresented in our government, and feel discriminated against. Something needs to be done about this in order to bring peace. Hiruzen closed his eyes for a second before opening them again. A smile graced his lips before he spoke again. I have decided it's about time Kanoha has had an Ichiha Hokage. Itachi, from this day forward, I will begin training you in order for you to replace me, and claim the title of Gaudin Hokage. He told the Anbu operative. Ichiha Itachi was a shinobi infamous for his ability to act purely on reason, and hide his emotions completely. After hearing the Hokage's solution, however, his lauded ability to hide emotions faded. His eyes widened in surprise, and his mouth dropped slightly. He remained silent, processing the information. A few seconds passed before he reobtained the ability to speak. Hokage-sama, are you sure of this? He asked quietly. I'm not qualified to lead Kanoha. I don't have any of the capabilities to do so. Itachi, you are more than qualified. You are one of the most talented and respected shinobi of your generation, and you continue to grow in skill and in reputation as the years go by. Here is a noted proudly. I realize you may not be familiar with all of the political aspects of the position, which is why I will be training you. It will be a few years before you are probably ready to replace me. However, I personally believe that there is no other perfect candidate than you. Itachi didn't say anything, still processing the information. Confusion was evident on the boy's face, causing Hirazan to sigh. He then started to speak again to further explain his decision. The clan's actions are based on their treatment in the village, and how they feel the other members of Kanoha view them. 
they feel as if we are out to get them. So, this is also a political appeasement to your clan. With you, and Ichiha, as Hokage, your clan will see that Hokage is one of them. They will believe that you will not act against their best wishes. The Sandame elaborated. But will it work? And are there any better options than me? Itachi questioned. Sandame shook his head. There is no guarantee. However, I know your father, and I know the multiple Ichiha that are under me. They do not want needless fighting. They are acting in what they feel is in their best interest. And seeing you, as Hokage, I feel, as if they will see you, as Hokage and, by association, a village with their best interest in mind. I believe this will work. The Hokage then shook his head again. And, considering that your clan is planning a coup, I feel that you, the shinobi who informed me of this coup, are the ones who are acting with the village's best interest in mind. There is no better candidate than you. Itachi said quiet. His confusion faded, but there was still obvious conflict in his eyes. He remained in deep thought before speaking quietly. Hokage sama I do not feel as if I am ready to become Hokage. However, I personally agree with most of your logic, and I know you know more than me about what is best for the village. If you feel this is the best solution, and will help bring peace to Kanoha, then let your will be done. He said. Hirazen chuckled in response. You say you don't feel ready, but are willing to do so if it's for the village's safety and peace. Ichiha Itachi, you really are going to become a great Hokage. Hokage Itachi repeated the name, and the idea in his head. After listening to the Hokage's logic and opinion, the Ichiha was starting to slowly accept it, and the responsibilities it would bring. If it brings peace to the village, and my clan, then so be it. If you say so, Hokage-sama. Itachi said, a small smile gracing his lips. Itachi, I just declared you my successor. You can drop the sama. Hiruzen chuckled. Anyway, you are dismissed. Return to your clan. I will make my announcement about your appointment tomorrow. The Anbu operative bowed in response before exiting the room. With his discussion with Itachi over, Sirotobi hears and two left the room to head to bed. Both shinobi had only one thought in mind. That this solution would work and bring the village to peace. Itachi, you're home late. Itachi, upon entering his house in the Ichiha clan estate, was immediately greeted by his father, Ichiha Fugakir. The man was leaning against the doorway to the house, still fully dressed. Father. Itachi bowed to the man upon seeing him. I am surprised you're up. I am surprised to see you out for so long. Fugaku replied, a slight bitter tone to his voice. Where were you? I've been looking for you for the past few hours. Itachi resisted the urge to frown. Forgive me. I was summoned by Hokage-sama to discuss something with him. Summoned by the Hokage, ha. Huh? Fugaku grumbled, his words sounding almost poisonous. He continued to speak, this time louder. Well, what then? What was so important that he summoned you this late at night? Itachi actually gulped slightly. This is it. Hokage-sama has appointed me to be his successor. I am going to be the god in Hokage. He answered. Fugaku's eyes widened, and he nearly lost his balance. Upon compassing himself, he openly gaped at his son, registering his words. What? The Chiha clan had questioned, stuttering slightly. He said that he was going to train me these next few years in politics. Afterwards, I am to be appointed as God in Hokage. Itachi answered again, this time more quietly. Itachi and Fugaku studied with each other. Itachi was trying to see how his father was going to react to the news, and whether or not his new appointment would help destroy the plans for the coup. Fugaku, on the other hand, was simply trying to imagine what Itachi had just said. Sir Toby hears and appointed you to be Hokage. Fugaku repeated the idea again. Itachi nodded in response. You, and Ichiha. Again, Itachi nodded. The idea seemed so foreign, and impossible to Fugaku. Never in his lifetime could he imagine an Ichiha being Hokage. An Ichiha being in charge of Kanoha. The village, as he saw it, had been overrun with Senju ideas, and had turned against the Ichiha clan in the present day. The very idea of an Ichiha Hokage was just impossible. Now, however, according to his son, the impossible happened. Itachi, what does this mean, then? Fugaku asked. Itachi shook his head. What does it mean to you, father? Fugaku closed his eyes. Ever since the Kikbi attack, and the first accusations against his clan about the incident, he has grown to resent Kanoha, and being a part of the village. He genuinely feared that the village would one day wipe out his clan for being threats to the village's safety. He believed that it was going to happen, and that he needed to act fast before it did happen. Now, with the idea of an Ichiha, his own son, as Hokage, his fear seemed to be less certain. Itachi, what do you really think? Fugaku asked quietly. About everything. The Hokage, the clan, the village everything. Itachi remained silent for a second, trying to think of the proper words, before he started to speak. I've seen enough death already to last a lifetime. I don't want to see anyone die, whether they be Ichiha or other Kanoha shinobi. I want to do my part to make sure everyone in this village is able to be at peace. So you are never in favor of the Kufigaku grumbles quietly. Never on the side of your clan. Itachi shook his head profusely. I have never been against our clan. I want what is best for all of us. 
I just personally believe that a coup and the war that it would cause would be detrimental for everyone involved, especially our clan. The Anbu operatives' eyes narrowed. They were filled with determination. I want to do my part to make sure everyone, the Chihar not, is able to live in peace. And if I must become Hokage to create this peace, then so be it. Higaku said nothing, as he closed his eyes in deep thought. The determination that had filled Itachi was slowly starting to fade again, as he worried about his father's response. Just as he was about to speak up, his father opened his eyes, and laughed quietly. Heh, you know, Itachi, I always imagined you as a leader. I always was expecting you to replace me, as the head of the Ichiha clan, and lead our clan to greatness. But this Higaku gave his son a proud smile. You succeeded in my expectations. I'm expecting you to be the best damn Hokage this village has ever had. Father Itachi's eyes widened. Does that mean, no clan of mine will turn its back on my son, and the village he represents won't turn against our village? The Ichiha clan had stated firmly. Tomorrow, at the clan meeting, I want you with me, as we cancel our plans, and reveal to everyone that you are going to become the Hokage. Father Itachi's eyes threatened to water, as he bowed to his father in gratitude. Thank you. Heh, still, as stiff as ever. No need to bow to me. Fugeku was now laughing loudly, filled with joy that he had been missing for the past eight years. The man rushed over to his son, and pulled him into a hug. Itachi returned the hug immediately. If anything, I should be thanking you. You've done a good job, as a shinobi, Itachi, and I know you're going to be a great Hokage who will have the village, and the Ichiha's interests in mind. I'm proud of you. After finishing their hug, the two Ichiha bid each other goodnight, and headed off to bed. Ever since he heard about the ideas of the coup, Itachi had been having trouble sleeping. Now, knowing that the coup was going to be over, the Ichiha prodigy was able to fall asleep easily. The next day, in the afternoon, Itachi arrived at the Hokage's office. Saratobi hears and greeted him with a knowing smile on his face. I take it the news went over well within the clan. Here's an ass the Ichiha prodigy. Yes, Hokage Sama. Itachi replied with a smile of his own. The clan is still celebrating the idea of an Ichiha as Hokage. Nearly all of the conspirators have changed their tune and are now fully in support of Kanoha again. They all feel as if an Ichiha as Hokage will improve their reputation in the village greatly. Excellent. The Sanding cheered loudly. He then recognized a word the Ichiha had used and frowned slightly. I noticed you did not say all of the conspirators. I didn't. Itachi's smile faded as well. The main conspirators for the coup along with my father were Chiha Yurajiri, Ichiha Jikido, and Ichiha Rik. All three men have vanished without a trace. No one has seen them since the previous day. No one has seen them at all. Here is in question. Itachi shook his head. I'm starting to think that they may have heard me talk to my father about the appointment to Hokage. Once they heard that the coup was going to be cancelled, they may have fled the village. The Anbu operative sighed. This is all speculation, but I have no idea what happened to them otherwise. This is troubling. That they would be able to escape the village without a single person noticing hears and shook his head in frustration. I'll send Shinobi out to search for them. If they do not appear somewhere in the village by the end of the day, they will be marked as missing ninja, and will be placed in the bingo book. If they really fled the village because the coup was called off, then they are a danger to Kanoha, and must be dealt with immediately. Agreed. Itachi nodded. Hears and opened his mouth to speak, but was interrupted, as the door to his office was slammed open. A young blonde boy round 8 years old with blue eyes, and whisker marks on his cheeks ran into the room. Hey old man. Are you ready to go to lunch? The little boy asked excitedly. It's Tuesday. You promised we'd go to Ichiraku's today. Hirzen, and Itachi stared at the blonde boy for a few seconds before Hirzen smiled at him. I almost forgot, Naruto-kun. You tend to forget these things when you reach my age. He said with a laugh. Ah, come on. I know you're old, but you can't be that old yet. You got, what, another 10 to 20 years left. The blonde, Naruto, wondered with a shrug. Naruto-kun, I certainly hope I have more than 10 years. Hirzen said immediately with a sweat drop. Eh, hey, you probably do. I don't know. The boy shrugged again in response before his eyes filled up with excitement. Well, who cares if you forgot? Can we go to Ichiraku's now? Ha. <laughs> Itachi chuckled slightly at the interaction between Naruto and Sandame. He got up from his chair and walked towards the door. We can talk later, Hokage-sama. You enjoyed your lunch. Come back later tonight. Again, Itachi, we have much to discuss. Here is an informed him. Itachi nodded before bowing to the Hokage and Naruto. He then left the room. Naruto studied the young man walking out before turning to the aged Sandame. Hey, hey, who was that? He looks familiar. Naruto mumbled. He very well may. He's a Chiha Itachi, the older brother of one of your classmates, Sasuke. Here is an answered. Really? Naruto's eyes widened. Yes. The Sandame chuckled. He's also going to the next Hokage. Naruto's eyes widened further before he let out a loud scream. What? But I was supposed to be the god in Hokage Databeo. Hirzen's chuckles turned to a loud laugh, as he watched the boy he treated like a grandson pout. Calm down Naruto-kun. 
I have faith that you will become Hokage one of these days. It just so happens that Kanoha needs a new one right now, and Itachi is the best candidate for the job. Hiruzen told the boy to appease him. Naruto stopped shouting, and started to think. Yeah, I guess. You're old, so it's a good idea to get someone younger for now. But what's so special about him? Tell you what, we can talk about Itachi over lunch. You still want to go, right? Hiruzen reminded Naruto about the reason the blonde came in the first place. Naruto's eyes widened in realization before he grabbed the Hokage's hand, and dragged him out of the office to go get lunch. The boy was mumbling at Chirakus, Maizo Raymond, and Delicious the entire way out of the building, while Sandame chuckled at the boy's antics. The previous night, Saratobi hears and made a decision to appoint Ichiha Itachi, as the future god in Hokage. Both he, and Itachi agreed to the idea, feeling as if it was the option that would generate peace for Kanoha. The two men were unaware of the consequences Hiruzen's appointment would have on the entire shinobi world. Uruka sensei it's time for class to be over. Can we go now? Imino Ruka, instructor at the Kanoha Shinobi Academy, looked up at the clock in his classroom. It was indeed time for class to end for the day. Before he dismissed his students, though, he had an announcement to give. I'll let you all out for the day soon, don't worry. But before I do, I want to remind you guys that because tomorrow is a special day, class tomorrow will be cancelled. He explained. Most of the academy students started to cheer loudly at the prospect of having no class. One student, however, was confused. Sensei, what do you mean? What's so special about tomorrow? He asked. Before Ruka could answer, one of the other classmates, Inuzuka Kiba, let out a loud scoff. You don't know? What, do you live under a rock? Inuzuka laughed to himself. Tomorrow's the day where the Sandaim steps down, and the Godaim replaces him. Uruka was about to lecture Kiba about his tone of voice and attitude, but he was again interrupted by more cries of confusion from the other students. We're getting a new Hokage. Since when? Why did I not know about this? It's been known for two years, and I've been talking about this all week. I swear, do any of my students pay attention to anything? The academy instructor sighed in frustration. Yeah, the old man decided he wanted to put someone else in charge. Someone a lot younger. Uzumaki Naruto said loudly, getting everyone's attention. Oh be quiet Naruto. Like you knew about this if I didn't. One of his fellow students, a girl with brown hair, said, as she rolled her eyes. Hey Ma'ai, you don't know shit. Don't act like you're smart or anything. Naruto exclaimed. In response, the girl, Mai, reddened in anger. Before she could do anything about his comments, Naruto continued to speak. The god aim is going to be some black-haired guy named Itachi. He's my brother. The lies were then directed towards Ichiha Sasuke. The boy, usually sitting quietly in his seat until class ended, was standing up. Oh yeah, that's right. Old man Sande mentioned that to me. I forgot about that. Naruto said, rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. Sasuke nodded in response. Sandame has been training my brother for the past two years in all of the duties of the position. Today, he's finally ready to succeed him. Immediately after Sasuke's comment, nearly all of the Kanoichi rushed over to Sasuke's seat. Most of them were blushing, and a few of them even appeared to have hearts in their eyes. Of course your brother would be Hokage, Sasuke-kun. Ino said dreamily. Maybe you'll be the Rocky Dame after him. Mai added in a similar dreamy tone. Whatever. Sasuke rolled his eyes in response, as he backed away from the girls. Can I get going now? Hey, I'm the one going to be Rocky Dame. Get in like Sasuke. Naruto exclaimed loudly. Naruto's female classmates turned their attention away from Sasuke and towards Naruto. They all glared at the blonde, releasing a sizable amount of killing intent at the boy. Sasuke took this opportunity to get out of his chair and away from the girls. He then started to walk to the door. You can have the position of Naruto. Being the Hokage is Itachi's thing. Not mine. The Chiha boy said dismissively. Naruto's eyes widened slightly in response, but Sasuke paid it no mind. He, instead, turned his head towards Uruka. Uruka-sensei, may I be excused? Uruka blinked in response before nodding. Yes, class is dismissed. Have a good day. Sasuke bowed before leaving the room. The other academy students followed behind one by one. Naruto, too, walked out of the room slowly. The blonde, however, was deep in thought. Sasuke seemed upset when we talked about the Hokage. Naruto noted with a frown on his face. Why would it bother him, though? What would upset him about it? This is the place Itachi noted a sign of a building, as he walked into it. Itachi entered a small tea shop near the Kanoha Ninja Academy. The young man walked up, ordered a cup of tea, and sat down at an empty table. He then stared at the door. A few minutes passed, and Itachi received his cup of tea. The door then opened up to the shop, and another man walked into the room. He was an old man with black shaggy hair. He had bandages covering his forehead, and his right eye. He had a white shirt on with a black robe over it that covered his right arm. The man walked over to the counter with a cane, and ordered a cup of tea. Itachi mentally tensed at the sight of the man, but he had no outward reaction. After receiving his tea, the man walked over to Itachi's table, and sat down. Thank you for coming at my request, Itachi. I hope I didn't keep you waiting for too long. He told the Ichiha. 
Itachi shook his head in response. I was only here for a few minutes. Don't worry about it Danzm Sama. The crippled man, Danzm, nodded in response. The two men took a sip of their tea in near unison. Silence filled the table for a few seconds before Itachi started to speak. Forgive me for asking, but what exactly did you want to talk about today? It's unusual for you to plan a meeting with someone. Especially during the day. Itachi noted with a neutral tone of voice. Your schedule is going to be filled in the next few days. I felt like I should talk to you while I had the opportunity. Danzm commented. How do you feel, Itachi? Tomorrow is your big day. I've been training for this day the past two years. I feel ready. Itachi responded. You're not nervous at all. He questioned. Why would I be? Uchiha asked. Being Hokage is a stressful position. I'm sure Harrison has gotten that point across. The crippled man noted as he stared at his tea. The entire village is going to be your responsibility. It'll be your duty to keep this village safe. Danzm's eyes left his tea and glared at Uchiha. The entire village. Not just your clan. Itachi matched his glare with one of his own. I realize that. I'll do my best. But is your best enough? Danzm questioned, eyes going back to his tea. He took a sip before speaking again. A prodigy you may be, but you are also young and inexperienced in the world of politics. Yandane was also young when he was chosen to become Hokage. Itachi pointed out, as was the Yandane Mizukich. I'm pretty sure we all know how well that decision worked out for Kiri. Danzm retorted. Itachi frowned. Kurigaku appointed the Yandane Mizukich, Yugura, when he was 17 years old. Ten years had passed since his appointment, and the village of Kurigaku had fallen into a period of bloodshed and civil war due to the leadership of Yugur. Itachi pushed his teacup to the side of the table and glared at the crippled man. Danzm, what exactly are you wanting to talk to me about? Are you trying to threaten me in some way or something? Danzm let out a small chuckle. Threatened? No, of course not. I'm not one for threats. I simply act when I see a need for action. The man then glared back at Itachi. I just wanted to remind you of the importance of the position of Hokage. Your life is forfeit now. You belong to Kanoha. Kanoha's safety and power are all that should matter to you. I trust you will be able to act in the best interests of the village. The Ichiha nodded, not dropping his gaze. I will give my all for this village. The older man's glare intensified. For Kanoha's sake, I hope it is enough. Just remember that what is in the best interest of the village may not always be the most ethical of decisions. Anzm got out of his chair and picked up his teacup. Bidding farewell to the Ichiha, he proceeded to walk out of the restaurant. Itachi was left alone at his table. What is he planning? Itachi mumbled to himself as he got out of his own chair. Itachi left the tea house as well and headed back home. He was going to need to get as much rest as he could. Tomorrow was going to be a big day for him. The next day came quickly for the people of Kanoha. Celebrations filled the streets of the village as villagers crowded around the Hokage's mansion. Many were buying decorations, food, and other items to commemorate the day while they waited for the inauguration of the Godin. Inside the mansion, Ichiha Itachi was getting prepared for the inauguration in a locked room. His parents, Mikoto and Fugaku, his younger brother Sasuke, and his best friend Shisi, were all waiting outside of the room impatiently for the soon-to-be Godin. After a while, Itachi walked out dressed in the robes of the Hokage. Fugaku smiled proudly at his eldest son. Itachi, the robes suit you. You look like a true cage. I'll say. Shisui added with a playful smirk. Looking good, Itachi. Itachi smiled in response. Thank you. Now all we have to do is get you a little more personality, lest we have to live under the reign of the most boring Hokage in the history of ever. Shisui added. Itachi's smile dropped, and he gave a glare at his best friend. Shisui and Sasuke proceeded to laugh loudly at Shisui's joke. Fugaku chuckled lightly as well. Mikoto, however, ignored the laughing boys and walked over to her son. The woman had tears of joy in her eyes as she gazed at him. Itachi you look so dashing, so handsome. Mikoto told her son as she gave him a hug. I'm so proud of you. Her eldest son returned the hug and rubbed her back gently. Mother, I can hardly believe it. My little baby boy is Hokage. Mikoto tightened her hug on Itachi. I remember back when you were just a year or two old and you stole your father's forehead protector. You tried so hard to get it on your head like him, but you couldn't and you were crying because you weren't a tough shinobi like your father. And that little baby boy has grown up into the most powerful shinobi in Kanoha. Whoa, whoa. What was this about Itachi crying because he couldn't get a forehead protector tied to his head? Shisui interrupted the moment, his smirk seemingly growing. Itachi resisted the urge to blush and shook his head. He pulled away from his hug with his mother and gave her a look. Mother, please, I'd rather not discuss my early childhood right now. No, no, go on mom. What else do you have to say about Itachi? Sasuke added with a similar smirk to Shisui. Ah, Itachi. The robes suit you well. All Chiha clan members in the room turned their heads. Sir Toby hears and entered the room. The man was wearing a black mesh suit, instead of the Hokage robes that he was generally seen wearing. He was holding the Hokage's red hat in his hands. Sandim-sama, it's nice to see you. 
Fugaku bowed to the man. Is it time for the inauguration? Fugaku, I will soon no longer be an active Hokage. Just call me Hiruzen. Hiruzen said with a slight chuckle. And yes, it is indeed time. Are you ready for Itachi? The Chiha prodigy nodded in response. Then let's get going. Sandame suggested this before turning to Itachi's family and Shisei. The four of you may want to head on outside. Make sure you get there before us. Got it. Mikoto nodded in understanding. Itachi, we are so proud of you. Make us proud, son. This is your day. Fugaku added. Itachi, in all seriousness, you're gonna be the best Hokage we've had. Shisui said with a smile. Sasuke gave no verbal reply. He gave his brother a thumbs up, which Itachi quickly returned with one of his own. The Chiha prodigy's family, along with Shisui, left the room and headed on outside the mansion to join the festivities. Hiruzen and Itachi were left alone. The two men proceeded to walk further into the mansion, heading towards a nearby balcony. So, Hiruzen-san, what are you going to do now after you pass on the title to me? Itachi questioned, making a note to use the Sandame's name instead of his title. Well, I'll have a lot more free time now. Perhaps I'll try to be more involved in the Ninja Academy, and try to help train the new generation. I always told myself that if I didn't get the Hokage position, I would have tried to be an Academy instructor. Hiruzen answered with a chuckle. Only someone like you would have the patience for that job. Itachi responded with a similar laugh. Indeed. It takes a lot of patience, but it's definitely worth it. At the very least, it'll be a good way to kill time, as I get older, and older. The Sandane noted. After a minute of walking, and some small conversation, Itachi and Hiruzen reached their destination. The balcony doors. Hiruzen walked forward onto the balcony, and stood at the end of the balcony. The people of Kanoha saw their Sandane, and started to cheer, as all eyes focused on him. Hiruzen delivered a speech, talking about his time as a shinobi, and about his reign as the Sandane. He talked about his return to the position after the death of the Yandane, and how Kanoha has recovered since the Kikbi attack. He then talked about how the people of Kanoha, both civilians and shinobi, were the strongest and most caring throughout the shinobi nations, and how it was an honor for him to serve as their leader for so long. His speech received a loud applause from the crowd. After completing his speech, he turned his attention back towards Itachi. The Chiha nodded and proceeded to walk forward. He walked onto the balcony and stood next to Hiruzen. The eyes of the Kanoha population turned towards the Ichiha. As my time as Hokage ends, I pass on the hat and the authority to the new generation. I trust the Kanoha will prosper and grow under a new Hokage. Hiruzen declared as he held out the hat to Itachi. I present to you Gading Hokage, Ichiha Itachi. Itachi took the hat from Hiruzen's hands and put it on his head. The reaction was instantaneous. The people of Kanoha cheered loudly at the sight of the new Hokage. It's happening this really is happening Itachi let a sincere smile across his lips as he turned his head towards different groups of people in the crowds below him. The reign of the Gading Hokage, Ichiha Itachi, has now begun. The next day, a couple of civilian architects arrived at Hokage Mountain. They were tired and seemed red in the face due to activities from the previous day's celebration, but they were all excited for the day ahead. I don't think I partied that hard since Yandame's inauguration dam, that's why I don't drink much anymore. One of the architects noted as he rubbed his head. Quit bitching. You got a hangover, just like everyone of age in the village. Big whoop. Another architect retorted, rolling his eyes. The hungover architect glared in response. I'm pretty sure mine's worse than most other people. Don't tell me it's not a big deal. Eyes, we can't be fighting now. We got a big day ahead of us. A third architect said with a large grin on his face. Today is the day. We get to work on the head for God Im Sama and add it to the mountain. We can't have any complaints or negative attitudes. We need focus and we need determination. All civilian architects, including the two that were arguing, nodded in agreement. The group of architects, after hours of setup and preparing equipment, reached the faces of the mountain to start construction of the Godim's face. Just as they arrived and were at the space reserved for Godim, they noticed something. Hey boss. Someone's covered the entire area here with paint. One of the architects exclaimed. The lead architect, the one who rallied his fellow workers, rushed over and saw the area for Godim's face. It was, indeed, covered in paint. The paint was still slightly wet, and depicted a very crude depiction of Itachi's face. Underneath it was written a small phrase. All hail the Godame, but just you wait for the Rocky Dame. He'll be twice as cool. The architect, who had been preaching about positive attitudes, couldn't help but glow red in anger. He had a hunch at the culprit, and couldn't help but shout aloud his suspicions. Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto was, indeed, the culprit. After being notified about his painting, a group of Chiknin and Jmin were sent out to capture Blonde and bring him to the Hokage to be reprimanded. It took them two hours before they were finally able to trap the academy student and bring him back to the Hokage's office. Ha, it keeps taking them longer and longer to catch me. Am I getting better at this stuff or what? Naruto chuckled to himself. The blonde was nearly tossed into the Hokage's office by the Jinin that had captured him. 
Naruto brushed off some dirt on his clothes before coming face to face with Itachi. Er the blonde rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Hey Agadim sama. Itachi sighed in response at seeing the boy's awkward response. Hello Naruto. Have a seat. Naruto sat down in a chair in front of Itachi's desk. The boy had a slight nervous look on his face. I'm not in trouble, am I? The old man would never punish me too hard for doing anything. He would just tell me to not do it again. Naruto explained, still rubbing the back of his head. He'd tell you not to do it again, but you would anyway. Itachi noted, resisting the urge to chuckle. I'm not going to punish you Naruto. The newly appointed Godim stated. The Izumaki immediately sighed in relief. A grin quickly came over his face. So, then, did you like my pain job? I felt like I captured the real you. Itachi actually let a frown come over his face. You mess up my face. What? Naruto blinked in surprise before shaking his head. No way. I made sure to study with you yesterday, there's no way I did. I saw the painting on the mountain. My eyes aren't that narrow, and I don't look that unhappy. Itachi noted. It's not unhappy. You look serious. Like Naruto closed his eyes, trying to come up with the right wording. Like you have to fart, but are trying really, really hard to not let it out. Itachi immediately was face-palmed, unable to resist the urge. Of all the ways to say that he reminds me way too much of Shisei. Ah, got him some are you okay? Naruto asked in confusion. I'm fine. Just don't refer to my face like that again please. He requested. Sure whatever. The Uzumaki shrugged in response. The Chiha then realized something he wanted to talk to Naruto, and changed topics to it. Naruto, if you don't mind me asking, how are you able to avoid the shinobi for so long? Ha. Huh? Naruto blinked in response. I sent both Chiknin and Jmin out to bring you here, and you avoided them for two hours. How were you able to do that? Itachi elaborated. Oh? The blonde's eyes widened in realization. Um I don't know exactly. I've just been good at hiding, and stuff, you know. I've been practicing it, and I'm quick. I'm just hard to catch. Itachi remained quiet for a few seconds, trying to understand the blonde's response. A few seconds passed before he spoke up. Naruto, from what I understand, you failed the graduation test to become a genin. Ichiha noted. Naruto's face immediately stiffened in response. Hey, I didn't fail. He exclaimed defensively. I was just trying to graduate two years early, and they told me I couldn't so what? I was just trying to wonder how you wouldn't pass the graduation exam if you were able to avoid the pursuit of Chiknin and Jmin Shinobi. Itachi clarified. Based on that alone, I feel you should be a genin at least. Really? Naruto's eyes widened in response to Itachi's praise. The Chiha Hokage nodded, as he smiled in response. Try taking the test again early next year. I'm pretty confident you should be able to pass it then. Naruto's eyes actually started to water slightly. No one, under the old man, Uruka, and the two workers at Ichiraku seemed to have any faith in him. Here, the new Hokage was saying that he had faith in him, as well. The blonde couldn't help, but smile in response. Ha I like you serious sama. He exclaimed. Serious sama. Itachi repeated the phrase with a hint of confusion in his voice. Well that's what you are. You got aim, and you're always serious. You serious sama. The blonde explained with the same smile. Itachi processed his newly appointed title, and the logic behind it, and he laughed in response. Naruto, you remind me way too much of Shisei. The two of you need to meet at some point. Hey, hey. What's so funny? Naruto questioned curiously. Hey nothing, nothing. Just thinking. Itachi responded, his laughter dying down. You're free to head out now, Naruto. You're not in trouble. Just try not to do too many pranks. I'd rather not have to have you get dragged to my office every day. Naruto nodded in response. He got up, and was about to head on out the door when he heard his stomach growl loudly. A sheepish look appeared on his face, which was then followed by a pleading look. I'm serious Sam, the old man would sometimes take me out for Raymond at Ichirakus. Would you want to come with me? He asked. Itachi closed his eyes in thought, as he tried to remember if he had any appointments for the day. A second passed before he realized that he was, indeed, free. Sure, I wouldn't mind. The grin developed on Naruto's face, as the blonde rushed over, and pulled the god out of his desk. The two then left the mansion, and headed off to go get dinner together at Ichirakus. Naruto and Itachi had just created a bond between a future shinobi and his Hokage. A bond that would change their lives forever. Amik. Itachi's training. The day had passed since Hiruzen publicly declared Itachi as his successor. Both Hiruzen and Itachi knew that the Ichiha, despite being a prodigy, was not prepared to claim the title of Hokage. Sandame would need to train his successor. The two men met each other in the Hokage's office to begin this training. Itachi, it is probably going to be at least a year or two before I feel you are ready to take the hat and my title as Hokage. There are a lot of things that you need to know and be capable of before I feel comfortable with you being the Godin. Here is an explained. You are going to have to become aware of many s rank secrets of Konoha. You're going to have to improve on your understanding of politics and figure out diplomatic responses to foreign and local leaders. You're going to have to become aware of every aspect of this village. 
and you are going to have to improve on your individual skills. You are indeed talented, and are one of the greatest shinobi your generation has improved, but you are going to need to be constantly improving. You need to be ready to face any danger, and threat to Kanoha that could come at any given moment. I understand Hokage-sama. Itachi responded immediately. Hirazen, just call me Hirazen Itachi. Hirazen chided before continuing. Regardless, we have a lot to cover during these training sessions. And I figured the first day of training should be focused on the most difficult aspect of being Hokage. Itachi nodded again in understanding. What do you wish me to work on? A sand aim gestured to his desk. Have a seat there, Itachi. The Chiha nodded in response, and took a seat at the Hokage's desk. Hirazen proceeded to pull out a stack of papers from seemingly nowhere, and slammed them on the desk. Hokage saw, er dot Hirazen. Itachi gave the man a strange look. This is just a sample of the paperwork you must complete, as Hokage. Hirazen said. Each paper must be studied, read carefully, and then responded to appropriately. You need to be careful. Occasionally, the civilian council will send a paper with a rather idiotic request. You want to make sure you don't accidentally pass a stupid law or something. Itachi turned his head in confusion. I am going to leave you with the paperwork, Itachi. I'll be back in about an hour or so to your progress. Good luck. Hirazen said politely before he left the room. Itachi blinked in response before he turned his attention to the piles of paperwork. This is the hardest part of the job. The Chiha prodigy pulled out a piece of paper from the pile and started to study it. Well, I guess I should start. How hard can this be? An hour had passed when Hirazen returned to the office. When he came into the room, he saw Itachi was studying a sheet of paper with near bloodshot eyes. Approximately 90% of the paperwork he had started with was completed and filed to the side of the desk accordingly. Ah, Itachi, how are you doing? Sande asked cheerfully. Itachi gave no response. The boy continued to focus on the paper. He soon slammed the paper down on the Hokage's desk, signed it, put it with the piles of completed papers, and then pulled out another sheet. You look stressed. Here is a noted. You think? Itachi finally commented, as he continued to focus on his next paper. A devious smirk developed on the older man's face. It would be a shame if, well, there was more paperwork that needed to be done. Itachi turned away from his paper, and stared at the sandame in surprise. The Hokage was, indeed, holding another giant stack of paperwork. Please Lord of God no Ichiha begged. Oh, but you must. It is the duty of the Hokage. Hirazen chuckled, as he placed a new pile of paperwork on the desk. Seeing the new stacks of paper that needed to be completed, Ichiha Itachi fell backwards in his chair, and promptly passed out. Hirazen started to laugh loudly in response. Well, I must say, he responded better than Minato did when he got assigned his first batch of paperwork. The Sandame reminisced. Thankfully, another soul knows the agonizing feeling of paperwork. With that thought, Hirazen left the room to get some tea to pass the time while Itachi was unconscious. The aged shinobi was daydreaming about a life without paperwork, and was actually looking forward to the day when Itachi succeeded him, and he could finally leave the cursed paperwork behind. Alright class, we are going to spend the rest of the day working on the transformation jutsu. Suratobi-sama is here to observe, and help anyone that needs it. Iruka announced it to the class. Suratobi Hirazen chuckled to himself, as he walked into the classroom. You can just call me Hirazen, Iruka. I thought I explained this to you a long time ago. Good morning Hirazen sensei. The academy students sat in near unison, as they stood up, and bowed to the older man. Good morning. The former Hokage bowed back before turning his head towards Iruka with a smile on his face. As you can see, the students are able to call me by my real name. What can I say, old habits die hard. You're still the sand aim to me. Iruka answered with a laugh, as he rubbed the back of his head. Here's and laughed again, as well. Iruka proceeded to call up the students to present their transformation jutsu. It was time to see how much they had understood the basics of a... Ever since stepping down as Hokage, Hirazen had focused most of his free time working at the Kanoha Ninja Academy with the students. He worked with all grades and ages and tried to provide insight and the proper push to help the students become the best shinobi they could be. After the first week that he was involved, he was starting to question the quality of the teaching at the academy and he feared slightly for the future of Kanoha Shinobi. A year later, and after a few revisions to the academy curriculum that he had pushed for, Hirazen felt that the academy was training the students properly. His fears were put to rest in his mind. The next generation of Kanoha Shinobi was going to, in his mind, surpass the previous generations. One by one, the academy students came up and presented the transformation jutsu. All of them were able to create a good transformation of a person of their choice. Considering their skill level of the average academy student, the former Hokage and Iruka were greatly impressed. The transformation practice session continued along as more students showed off their transformations. Soon, it became the turn of Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto, do your best transformation. Iruka requested, as he wrote information about the other student's transformation on a piece of paper. Ha, hey, I can do that. Naruto smirked, as he made a hand sign. Transform. 
The boy hears and had an idea of what was going to happen. The older man closed his eyes. Eruka and the rest of the academy students kept their eyes open to witness Naruto's transformation. Naruto had transformed into a blonde woman around the age of 18. The woman was completely naked, with a few smoke clouds floating in the air around her covering specific parts on her body. The woman was posing in a very provocative manner to her teacher. Do you like my Ruka sensei She asked. Naruto, you're disgusting. Sakura growled from her place with the other students. You pervert. Ino shrieked. I should kill you for that. Eruka rubbed away the small trace of blood from his nose before any of his students noticed it. He then glared at the woman in front of him and smacked her on the way. She yelled in pain, which caused Naruto to drop his transformation. Naruto, take this seriously. Eruka shouted. What's the big deal? You asked for a transformation, and I gave you one. The blonde asked, as he rolled his eyes. He rubbed the top of his head, which was hurting slightly from Eruka's attack. Hiruzen opened his eyes, and sighed, as he stared at Naruto. Naruto-kun, Eruka, and I just want to see your skills with them. We don't want to see any jokes or pranks. We want to see exactly what Uzumaki Naruto can do. The former Hokage stated, as he smiled at the boy, like a grandfather would smile at his grandson. Can you do it one more time, and do a legitimate transformation please? Naruto stared at Hiruzen for a few seconds before he sighed. Fine, fine. I'll do it. How does he do it? Iruka wondered, as he watched Naruto make a hand sign. Ever since the former Sandame started to show up at the academy, he noticed that Naruto had been improving in his skills. The boy paid more attention to class, and put more effort in his work whenever Hiruzen was there. All it took was a smile, and a few words from the older man, and Naruto would sigh, and do what he was told. I guess he just doesn't want to disappoint Sirotobi-sama. Transform. Naruto disappeared in another poof of smoke. In his place was the splitting image of Yumi no Ruka. The academy instructor, as well as the former Hokage, looked at the transformation in shock. You even got my scar down perfectly, Iruka noted before he gave the boy a thumbs up. Very well done Naruto. Very good job indeed. Hiruzen nodded in agreement before smiling again. Naruto dropped his transformation and walked back to his seat with a grin on his face. Class continued as Iruka and Hiruzen witnessed the transformations of the remaining few students. After the demonstrations, Iruka gave them a lecture to further explain the technique and help them improve on it. Naruto yawned and looked as if he was going to fall asleep during Iruka's lecture. Hiruzen gave the blonde a pointed look. The Uzumaki, after seeing Hiruzen's look, shook his head in frustration before paying closer attention to Iruka. The exchange between the academy student and the former Hokage was quick and subtle, but Iruka noticed it. This caused the academy instructor to frown internally. Seriously, how does he do it? What about Saratobi-sama causes Naruto to pay attention? Iruka wondered to himself. He tried to ignore his questions and any thoughts of self-doubt about his teaching abilities. He, instead, focused on the lesson he was giving to his class. Ichiha Itachi sat at his desk in the Hokage's office. The young man was reading a mission report for a B-rank mission he had assigned to a team of Chikin. At first, like his predecessors, Godame hated the very idea of paperwork. After doing it for a year straight, however, Itachi became accustomed to it and was able to do it rather quickly. He soon found it to be enjoyable at times. He usually did his paperwork alone, when it was quiet. He was able to simply enjoy the silence, and be at peace. Itachi was about to finish the mission report when the door to his office was slammed open. The loud noise caused him to drop the paper in surprise, and nearly had him fall out of his chair. Hey Itachi. Itachi. Ichiha picked up the mission report from the ground, and looked up to see his best friend, Ichiha Shisei, standing in the room. The Ichiha Jinin was holding a scroll, and a mission report in his hand. Shisei, we've gone over this multiple times. Not next time. Itachi requested with a heavy sigh. Itachi, we've known each other for years now. When do I ever knock? Shisui rolled his eyes. The Godim Hokage shook his head in response. I swear, I have no idea how you are older than me. You're 21 years old, and you act like a 12-year-old genin. And I have no idea how you are so young. You act like what I expect Sandame or one of his teammates will act like 10 years from now. The Jimin responded. One of us has to be the mature one. Itachi stated, as he rolled his eyes. And thank God it is you. I'd hate to be all stiff and serious all the time. Way too boring. Shisui exclaimed. The two Chiha stared at each for a few seconds before Shisui burst into laughter. Itachi chuckled as well, but he was not nearly as loud as his friend. It's been a while. How was your last mission? Itachi asked. Completed of course. Shisui responded with a smirk as he tossed the mission report in his hand to the Hokage. No injuries or anything either. No injuries or problems at all. On an A-rank mission. Impressive work. Itachi complimented, as he caught the mission report. Hey, I'll take the compliment, but it's kinda undeserved. That mission was in A-rank just because the client was super rich, and therefore had the extra money to spend. Shisui said, as he rolled his eyes. No fun at all. One guy tried to rob us, and I showed him why that was a dumb thing to do, and he ran away. 
That was all the action on the mission. Were you looking for some excitement or something? Got a mask, as he moved the new mission report to his pile of paperwork that still needed to be completed. Eh, kinda actually. I don't know. The Jmin shrugged in response with a sigh. I'm glad everything's kinda peaceful right now in the village. You know me better than most people. I'm really, really happy everything has been peaceful. But I don't know, I just feel like I'm not doing anything worthwhile right now. I feel like I'm just sitting on my ass, and doing lame missions you could assign to a gen and team, and not doing something that could actually help the village, you know. I've been giving you high ranked missions. It's just been bad luck you've been getting easy missions, as you see it. Then again, most people would consider that lucky. You're just unusual. Itachi noted. And damn proud of it. Shisui exclaimed, crossing his arms. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.